not dropping it crazy. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to On the Daily, a daily fantasy sports podcast brought to you by Road of His Radio. I'm Anthony Amico. You can find me on Twitter at Amixta. And uh, you're seeing the empty screen of one Matt Lamarca of the Action Network. He'll be back in two seconds. Uh, but with us now, of course, <laughs> is future father of the year. Host of the Bogey Free DFS show and my esteemed colleague at Rotoviz is none other than Matt Jones. You can find on Twitter at Matt Jones TFR. Jonesy, what's shaking? Nothing, man. Just uh, you know, got the sick kid at home and just no sleep right now. But somehow I managed to uh, to get in a little bit of research. So hopefully the takes will be hot tonight. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing's going on except everything that I care about is uh, in flux. No problem. <laughs> Uh, so I believe Matt is with us again of there the Action is. Network. Matt Lamarca on Twitter. Matt, what's going on? Uh, you know, thanks for taking a break from the NBA grind to join us tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited to talk a little football. Uh, also excited to sweat some NBA lineups tonight. I, I just love when both sports are going. You know, it's the best time of the year as a sports fan for me. Nice. Uh, definitely love it. Really like the the piece that you were part of with the Action Network talking about uh, the 2023 MVP. So that was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun to do. Yeah, so definitely check that out if you guys haven't already uh, over at the Action Network. Uh, before we get into the show, just to remind you, you can still get that 30% discount to a Rotoviz NFL Pass through the podcast homepage, rotaviz.com slash podcast. Fantasy playoffs are almost here. And if you want to take the whole thing down, you definitely want to be a Rotoviz sub. Save 30% by going through the podcast homepage, rotaviz.com slash podcast. We've also launched a Patreon account, patreon.com slash rotavizradio, which helps support our 10 weekly podcasts during the NFL season. Become a patron for just $5 and you get access to Rotaviz Live, which is our Sunday morning show. Airs at 11 a.m. on Sundays and, uh, you know, pretty much take all your questions, DFS, setting your lineups, stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, you obviously help support the programming. Before we get into week 13, 
we of course have to briefly go over some results from week 12. And we'll start, as always, with the Listener League, which was won by J-Man805. Uh, the only person... Man. Who, yeah, J-Man, the man. The only person to score over 200 points in the Listener League this week, 202.82. Uh, with a pretty interesting lineup, honestly. The Lamar Jackson-Gus Edwards stack uh, played Adam Humphreys, played Tyler Boyd, and, of course, had Christian the Goat McCaffrey, who scored 52.7 points. Uh, also played Ravens D, so a little QB, RB, DST stack. Uh, definitely appropriate when you basically consider that Lamar Jackson's a running back in the QB spot. Uh, and a pretty fun lineup, I think. So congrats to J-Man805. Uh, you're welcome. You had the, you took you took our rake this week. Uh, you took us. Uh, <laughs> our streak of cashing in the Listener League is over um at one was it was it a streak i was gonna at, say it was one, one streak <laughs> the streak ends at one and uh jonesy i don't see your dad anywhere in the no he's he was third he cashed again this week oh he's hit four, i don't know why i thought he was somebody else he's hit four wheels yeah that's your, dad, that's your dad's a that's goat. he was uh yeah he had a little bit of a sweat he was up there he dropped out uh in the late afternoon games but yeah man he's uh he's crushing right now we need your dad to make a guest appearance. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> take my spot to be fair. Your dad has to come on the show and like does your dad play anything else? Like does he play uh like actual DFS tournaments or does he just play like, you know, these ones that we do with you? Yeah, no, he plays he plays uh he plays NFL, all sorts of stuff. He plays cash, he plays uh plays some PGA stuff too. Yeah, he's uh he's all in on DraftKings. That's awesome. Father likes hey, son. Yep, he he does a little NBA every once in a while. That he's doing that that much right now. We need an NBA listener league. I'll make all my yeah, money back. I I will not be partaking in that. <laughs> I don't even know who's on the Knicks. Like, and they're my quote unquote favorite well, team. That's, so I mean, that's I, okay though. You'll ne- you're really never playing Knicks outside of like you just game. Hey, that's CHJ. plus EJ not knowing who's on the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get uh, into the stuff that I love, which is me dominating three men. Um, but we did run two three-man competitions this week. One for the Thanksgiving slate, which was won by LaMarca, courtesy of uh, Amari Cooper. And on the main slate, I won. So our standings, because we are counting the Thanksgiving slate, standings are now... I thought I counted double, to be fair. That's why I tried uh, so hard. It, it did not, unfortunately. No. Uh, um, kind of sing- so singular. The, the current standings are me, six and a half wins, Jonesy, four and a half, and LaMarca, two. We have five main slates left in the regular season, so Matt, really, you're going to have to uh, run the table here to win this. Jonesy, you're a dog, but definitely in play. I think this is going to be a lot of fun to track down the stretch. I, I 100%, by the way, expect to go 0-5 the rest of the way. So. I, I do want to say, like, I, I've i made it very clear that I want to come in first or third, and I came in third both uh, three minutes this week. So <laughs> I did kind of accomplish what I was going for. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. I, I Listen, think that I'm is, glass half full tonight, all right? That is There's fair. something to that, though. Like, I definitely treat these almost like a cash game, but that's been the wrong strategy evidenced by my results. Like, <laughs> my teams, I guess, on most weeks just don't have enough ceiling. So, yeah. well, I honestly, honest. like, I know you're joking about it, Jonesy, but it's probably the right way to approach this thing. I, yeah, uh, and, and that's what I do in all like the three and five mans that I enter. Like I just I try to be first. Like if I'm not like if I just screw it up, like I don't care. Like if if I'm third or fifth in a five man, who gives a shit? Like what's the difference? I um so I actually usually play my cash lineup in this thing. So I don't know what that says, but this week I did not. I played a tournament lineup because I didn't play any cash. And uh I you, you know, have I just failed out with a uh with a Melvin Gordon injury. Listen, the process was right. I Anthony <laughs> Lynn was wrong, and he fucking paid the price. So, yep, this is true. Just such bad coaching. He's so dumb. It was like I it was so it, funny buddy. too because on the Sunday morning show, I was like, the only way Melvin Gordon is seeing a full complement of touches is if Anthony Lynn's a bad coach, and uh, he's a bad coach. So that definitely could go. happen. Well, that, that's confirmed. I mean. <laughs> All right, let's get into the new stuff. We'll start talking week 13, and we'll start, of course, with quarterbacks. 
We finally have, uh, you know, hashtag all the dudes on the main slate now that the buys are done and uh, the Rams and Chiefs are done playing crazy primetime shootouts. Uh, the top three quarterbacks in pricing are Mahomes at 7,600, Cam Newton 6,600, and Jared Goff 6,400. Uh, Jones, who is your favorite play out of this group, uh, and will you be using one of them in cash? And if and Jared Goff, by the way, is minus 150 to be your answer to this question. It should be like way, way lower than that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think last week maybe I said that like the quarterback pricing is so different. Like I don't care about paying up, but like this, this is a steep price to pay for Mahomes in cash. I'm talking about, um, like it's a similar uh, like point expectation for the teams between. Uh, the Chiefs and the Rams. So why am I paying twelve hundred dollars more for like three extra implied points? Um, I just think you can fit a ton more um, if you save that twelve hundred. So I'm definitely going to be rolling out Goff and Cash. Uh, obviously, all three are in play in tournaments, but I would rather just go with Goff this week. Marco. I mean, if I could afford it, I would definitely go with Patrick Mahomes. Like it's just such a smash spot for the Chiefs. Like, Oakland is so bad at explosive play defense. The Chiefs make their living on explosive plays. Like, I really fully expect him to have a huge week. But like Jonesy said, he's just so much more expensive than the other guys. Uh, I think Cam will probably be the one that I end up on in cash if I do end up going with this tier. Like, he just gives you a safer floor, I think, in the matchup, and he's going to cost, you know, $1,000 less than Mahomes. Like, Carolina basically does everything through cam like i know mccaffrey had 100 yards rushing last week but basically the offense runs through cam newton at this point and it's the goat matchup against tampa bay so uh if i'm not gonna go with mahomes i could see newton but i mean really mahomes is the guy i want to get up to yeah <clears throat> very reasonable I, I think that in cash games i would prefer newton because of the matchup the overall scoring environment i definitely think those things point in cam's way uh, but I will say that in tournaments, I probably prefer Goff just because uh, I do think that his ceiling is still really high. Like, we know he has the 300-yard multiple touchdown games in his range of outcomes. And uh, Detroit has been much better against the run lately. I kind of think that, you know, the Rams are going to come into this looking to air it out. And uh, obviously, they're projected to score a bunch of points. So, you know, stacking Goff, I think, this week is going to be very profitable. The next tier is where I think... Uh, the next tier of player, I guess, I would say people are going to consider is like this 6K area, Deshaun Watson, Jameis Winston, Lamar Jackson, Andrew Luck. Uh, I mean, Jackson has obviously been like really safe lately. Uh, Winston was good last week. Watson was good last week. And Luck has been like flaming hot fire for the last month and a half, uh, along with the fighting Colts. So uh, Lamarca, who would be your favorite guy in this tier? Like, what are your thoughts, I guess, in general of this group? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue against Luck, against Jacksonville, who probably won't have or or may not have uh, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, Luck has just crushed all season. He's thrown for three touchdowns in, what, like eight straight games now? Uh, it's really hard not to like that guy at just 5,800 on DraftKings. Like, that's just a ridiculous price. Jones? Yeah, I, I definitely see that. Um I think it's I think it's interesting to see what's going on with Jameis too. Like he had what like eight interceptions in a three uh, three game span um, a few weeks ago, and now over the past couple of weeks, uh, you know he's throwing four touchdowns, just one interception. He's completing seventy five percent of his passes. So um, if he can continue to do that, which I think he can, like the the matchup doesn't scare me. I think a heavy dose of Winston in tournaments definitely makes sense along with luck. Like oh, you can play all four of those guys in stacks, but I think I like Winston and luck the best. I love Jameis Winston. And I know that like the benching risk is there, but Bucks quarterbacks are just the stonest of locks to hit the bonus. Yeah. Like if they finish the game, they hit the bonus. Like it's happened. I'm pretty sure every week. So uh, Jameis is a really good play. I mean, I don't think the Carolina defense is very good at all. I think the, yeah. there's going to be a lot of points in that matchup. Uh, and I actually don't really like this spot for Jackson against Atlanta. We were talking about this a little bit last night on laying the points, but uh, 
Atlanta playing so much zone defense, particularly cover three, it's going to really limit what I think Jackson's going to do on the ground. Uh, I mean, he's a phenomenal athlete, so maybe maybe he's just a rule breaker. But in general, like these teams that play zone defense do better against mobile quarterbacks than man defenses. Uh, so I, I think I prefer Winston from that perspective. And I, I just think at 6K, like he's too cheap. Like if there was no benching risk, like if Ryan Fitzpatrick didn't exist, uh, besides the fact that the world would be a sadder place, um, Much sadder. he'd be like 6,600 or 6,400. Like he wouldn't be 6K. So yeah. I, uh, I like Winston here. I, I find that egregious. I'm sorry. Like I get that 6K might not be enough for him, but Andrew Luck is better. He's he's put up better fantasy numbers and he's cheaper and has arguably a better matchup. I mean, like, he, def- I, he definitely I, doesn't have anywhere near a better matchup. That's uh, according to the Fantasy Labs opponent opponent plus minus he does. Well, fantasy Labs is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's that's your take, I guess. I mean. I, I would I would be willing to comfortably wager on Andrew Luck outscoring Jameis this week at 200 cheaper. Booked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean listen like I I just like when you when you have like such a high yards floor it's just like like that's just okay so but bang. the bonus so the bonus is bankable. is nice but it's not like Andrew Luck is not gonna hit the bonus either you know like they're both definitely in play for the bonus I mean. Luck has thrown, he only hit over 300 last game, but 297, 285, the two games before that. And like I said, he's thrown for three touchdowns now in eight straight weeks. So I, I, I don't know. Like to me, this one's a no brainer, but right. maybe, I, I this see what you're difference, maybe this will be the difference in the three man this week. Ooh. It would be one thing if, if these guys were priced differently. Like on FanDuel, you can definitely make a, a strong case for Jameis over Andrew Luck, but Luck is two hundred dollars cheaper. I'm not playing Jameis Winston over him. That's just that. Maybe that's that's me. Uh, I just don't see it. All right. Uh, do either of you guys have any interest in the cheap backups? I have to ask this just to stay on brand. But Driscoll and Kessler no. are like forty five hundred apiece. Yeah. Any chance? No. Yeah, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> no, zero, exactly zero interest. <laughs> okay, uh, that's fine. I I agree. I just wanted to ask. I'm glad I, that this is where we've arrived in 2018. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, on some respects, I think that the quarterback pricing is kind of stupid because, like, they just make every guy so cheap now on DraftKings. But the fact that it means we no longer have to consider guys like Jeff Driscoll and Cody Kessler makes it all worth it. <laughs> but it's fun, like like playing Chase Daniel on Thanksgiving and watching him, like that's fun, like that's that's good. But it's like that's Chase Daniel. He's like the highest paid per snap quarterback in the history of the NFL. So Chase Daniel is like one of the twenty best quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion. I like that, Chase that, Daniel. That may be true, and he he's paid, like, and you so know there you go. He's gonna no, I know. I'm saying it's a good thing. I I enjoy it, but I just I don't think that. I don't think Driscoll is that guy necessarily, and I definitely don't love Kessler. We know Kessler's so, not the guy. Yeah, yeah like yeah. we've seen it. Don't like Jackson thought he was good, so he can't be good. <laughs> 2016, Anthony Amico would just be balls deep into Jeff Driscoll. Oh, yeah, 100 like, like, <laughs> Because the quarterback pricing would be worse, and I'd be like, oh, Jeff Driscoll runs? This is perfect. Yeah, right, exactly. He only needs 12 <laughs> points to get me to approximately 3x value. Because Mahomes, Mahomes would be like 8,900 if, if this was a few years ago. <laughs> uh, any other guys that we haven't mentioned yet that you like for cash or tournaments, uh, Lamarca? Uh, I have to say Aaron Rodgers. I'm contractually obligated to mention Aaron Rodgers as a 14 point home favorite at just 6,200 against the Arizona Cardinals. Like, uh, especially considering he's probably going to be sub 5% owned. I think that that needs to be thrown out there. Yes. I agree. Jones, any, any amendments? Um, no, I agree with that. And I think, uh, I think Russ also should be in uh, GPP lineups. If you're, if you're making a few. All right, I like those, but I'm going to obviously throw it back to Baker, who has just been Breeze-esque over the past like couple weeks. Uh, big game. I, it goes without, Baker goes without saying. This is a big step up in class, though, for him, compared to the defenses he's seen recently. That's my only hesitation with him. But for sure, Baker has been the GOAT, 
and I love me some Baker. So if you want to throw him out there, I'm fine with it. Uh, I just just don't stack him with Landry. <laughs> no, yeah, I just have no. some concerns. I, I finally am quitting Jarvis Landry. It's finally yeah, I'm, over. I, I'm done too. So he's probably going to score three touchdowns this weekend. I uh, first of all, Jarvis Landry doesn't even have like three career touchdowns. So that's <laughs> I um I will say that like because it's a full slate, you probably don't have to go to those kind of guys. Like if I was making 150 lineups this week, Mahomes, Newton, Goff. Rogers. Jameis, Luck, Rogers, like, like, there's no way I have to go outside those guys. I feel like so you probably don't really have to get too cute. Uh, before we move on to running back, I just want to give a quick shout out. Jones's dad is in the chat. Like, first yes! of all, Jones's dad is the man. He's, Not he's only does he play DFS as a, you know, an older gentleman, he is on Twitch. He has a Twitch username, and he's in a Twitch chat. He's and he's giving daps to you, Matt. He says, uh, my. My DraftKings handle is hit four wheels, and Matt Jones taught me everything I know about DFS. Ah, let's go. When we eventually get merch, which may never happen, but <laughs> it's good. To, it's good to have dreams and ambitions. Uh, the first, the first piece of merch is going out to Jones's dad. Oh yeah, I mean, Locked. listen, he he rocks the bogey free uh, hat like all over the place. It's great. Oh, that's such a that's, he's that's like great. A, Parental. He's pride. like a walking billboard for me. That's great. <laughs> All right, let's move on to running back, where the elite tier of pricing is very, very clear. It's Todd Gurley at 9,300, Christian McCaffrey at 8,800. No other running back is over 8K this week on the main slate. So, Jonesy, uh, what's your preference here, and will you be pe- playing either, or maybe even both, in cash games this week? Um, I mean, I, I don't know about both. I think that's probably uh, – you probably have to do some really gross stuff at other positions to get there. <laughs> Um, that's a Jeff Driscoll lineup right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I don't know, like, God, like Gurley hasn't scored over 30 in like three weeks. So like who, like who even wants to play this guy now? Total like, what the hell? He's such a loser. Um, yeah, no, I mean, obviously they both make sense. Like Christian McCaffrey was just insane last week. I looked it up before. And if you just took his receiving work this year, he would be wide receiver 19 in PPR. Like that's kind of insane. That's an insane floor um, for a running back. So I think I would probably just go a little bit cheaper and go with McCaffrey if I'm going to play either of these guys in cash. Um, but I'm not sure that I'm going to uh, play, get to either of them in my actual cash lineup. Lamarco, what do you think? Wrong. The answer is Todd Gurley. Um, Christian McCaffrey is a great player. He has a great matchup. His price has come up almost $1,000 compared to last week. Meanwhile, Todd Gurley's down at 9300 This is a guy that we were comfortably playing, paying 10 k for at one point in the season. He also has an excellent matchup against Detroit, who stinks. I don't care if Anthony says they've been better against the run recently. They stink. Uh, they're 10-point favorites. Todd Gurley, to me, is the clear answer of the two. Yeah, I mean, I obviously disagree because of what I said before. Uh, I think both guys are really good, but I do think that 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 price gap, like the five hundred dollars, matters this week uh, when you're trying to fill out the rest of the lineup. And uh, I mean, the Bucks have been like maybe the worst run defense over the past like two months of the season. Like they have just gotten crushed every week. I have been smashing the over prop on opposing running backs for the past like three weeks and winning. Like they just can't stop running backs, and they can't stop in the passing game either, which is obviously good. For uh, a guy like McCaffrey, he's going to do a lot, of, a lot of receiving. Like the price increase, obviously, is uh, is notable, but McCaffrey is scoring a lot of touchdowns. Like he really is performing, you know, at that level. It's not like he hasn't earned it. Uh, you know, tied for the league lead in receptions at running back. Um, so for me, I prefer McCaffrey. I, Gurley is still going to do well. Like I don't think he's going to suck. Right. Um, but I just think that like the small differences in price and the small differences in matchup matter to me. Uh, Snacks Harrison is like a legit game changer up front, uh, but Gurley does you know Gurley does his own thing in the air sometimes too. So it's not like I think Gurley's gonna bust. I just think that McCaffrey is the better play. Yeah, I, I want to shout out Ian Hartitz over at the Action Network. He does a matchup manifesto each week. And one of the things he looks at is combined adjusted line yards per rush for both the offense and the defense. And Todd Gurley has the highest mark of the week. 
I get that those numbers could be a little bit different when you factor in Damon Harrison, but I think that where you guys are downplaying this matchup a little bit. So I, I, you know, Todd Gurley is Todd Gurley. He can smash in any matchup, but I still think this is a plus one for him and we're getting him at a discount. Uh, I mean, when did this is, this is obviously how you know, this is a great show. When did uh snacks Harrison become a member of the Detroit Lions? Do you know offhand? No. Well, I'm going to just guess that it's like somewhere around like week nine, week 10, like relatively recently. Um, Detroit has allowed the fourth least yards per carry since that time. So I, I, I do think that the impact is great. But yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, Todd Gurley can smash in any matchup. Like I don't, I don't disagree with that. I just think that in a game of small edges, I think that McCaffrey is better. That's all. Okay. Another board bet? Mm, I, I, I don't feel... As, I'll take as, that. Uh, I don't care. I'll take it. All right. Thank you, Jones. Jones. These are like, this is all Monopoly money. Like, we haven't even been keeping track of them. Like, who cares? I've been keeping track of Listen, them. Have we you? Have, we, have right. we have undefeated. I don't think that's that. true. <laughs> this is in the interwebs. Of course, we're keeping track. All right. the inter- the Can we get somebody sports. out there to, to keep track of Jones, Jones is dead. Yeah. Write these down. <laughs> <laughs> He will. I'm not like he actually probably would. Um, let's get to the next tier here. Saquon Barkley and Kareem Hunt are under 8K each. A little bit of a price gap between them and, and the next group, so I do kind of consider them a unique decision. Uh, uh, who do we go to first or the last one? Lamarca. So we'll go Jones first here. What do you think about Saquon versus Hunt? And uh, do you like these guys maybe over the first group of players given the savings? Yeah, I think I think that there's a pretty interesting um, like cash build by using the two of these guys as your most expensive running backs. Like, I obviously, like I said, like you can you can get to that guy, but like this reminds me of a few weeks ago. I think it was Hunt and Connor um, a few weeks ago, where like they were the play like obvious plays. You didn't have to pay all the way up, and you still have access to like a really good ceiling. And a decent floor, um, especially with Barkley with his receiving work. Um, so yeah, I feel like I like I haven't built any lineups yet, but just looking through right now, I feel like I would rather go with those two uh, together in my cash lineup than go like more expensive and have to like dip down cheaper um, in cash because I think you're you're probably guaranteeing yourself the same or a similar amount of touches with those two guys as you are with the. T- top two guys so um if i had to pick i would say saquon but um i don't think you need to pick i think i would rather just play them both all right matt uh lamarca do you agree play both uh i mean i i really just stand pretty hard for todd Gurley, so i don't think i can say play both <laughs> all um, right so barkley plus hunt is m- gonna be more than Gurley this week you want to book that <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a second player. No, no, no. No, you can. Uh, Jeff Driscoll. <laughs> How about Aaron Jones? That's similar salary. No, no, that's an outrage. <laughs> it's similar salary. Anyway. Um, we'll get to Aaron Jones. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy to me that, you know, Saquon Barkley is a four-point underdog, basically, and Kareem Hunt is like a 16-point favorite. But I think Saquon's the better play of the two, just because he's the god. Like, the <laughs> nothing stops him from scoring 20 points a week. Basically he's come down in salary. Uh, I'm obviously not expecting huge things against the Chicago defense, but what's great about him is if they shut down the run, he's going to be active in the past. He's like the definition of game script proof. So I think Barkley at 7,900 is a great play. Uh, I don't think he has the same ceiling as guys like Gurley and McCaffrey in this matchup, but as far as like a floor play for 8K, I think he's right up there with them. Yeah, I mean, in a vacuum, like neutral matchup, I don't really think that there's a big difference between Saquon and like Gurley. Uh, obviously, the like the game script expectation for those two teams and like points scored is a lot different. But Saquon has only gone under 20 points once all year. He's got two straight games of 36 or more, had a 40 point spot earlier in the year. Like the dude is just a stud. And, uh, you know, obviously Chicago has a really good defense, but I think that the price discrepancy more than makes up for that. This is not the first time that I feel like the dynamic pricing has like overstretched, uh, you know, it's worth and it's one of those spots. And the craziest part is that 
people might not play him. Like, Labs has him as the lowest projected owned guy between Gurley, McCaffrey, Barkley, and Hunt. 13 to 16%. And, uh, I mean, my hope is that Saquon wins me some money this week because I'm definitely playing him. Like, I just think that the price is way too cheap. Yep. Uh, Hunt is fine, by the way. Like, I don't think, I don't think playing both is a bad take. It's not the, it's not the construction that I have right now, but I am, uh, I'm certainly okay with that. Uh, now, we have a uh, big suspension news this week. Leonard Fournette uh, went full of Garrett Blunt on the Bills and uh, <laughs> is going to miss this game. So we have Carlos Hyde at 3,300, TJ Yeldon 4,400. Uh, I would imagine that Hyde is like the popular cash play given the difference in price, but you guys can definitely correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Lamarca, how do you feel about Hyde versus Yeldon? And uh, will you be playing either in tournaments with confidence this week? Yeah, I mean, Hyde definitely sets up as the better play. Uh, my biggest concern in that game is the game script. Mm -hmm. You know, we both picked the Colts on uh, the Lang the Points podcast this week. I think that the Colts have the potential to destroy Jacksonville here. And if they're playing from behind, that's going to create a lot more opportunities for Yeldon than Hyde as the pass catching back. So uh, I actually think... Yeldon is the more intriguing play for me in, in tournaments. Uh, Hyde would be the guy that I would be looking to in like cash games. I mean, 3,300 is super cheap. Uh, but again, I have concerns that that game was going to get out of hand. So uh, I like the idea of grabbing Yeldon at more than likely lower ownership of the two. Jones? Yeah, I'm I'm just excited that we have like this decision to make. Like we've had very few opportunities this year to like really get like a dirt cheap running back. Like even the backups have been like sometimes in like, you know, the Geo Bernards of the world are in like the 5k range. So like, this is, this is good. Um, I feel like Hyde opens up much and I, I completely agree with saying Marco, like I, I get that line of thought, but it's one of those things where it's like, it might be, it might be thin, but like what you're gaining elsewhere, I think is probably worth it. Um, I mean, if he can plunge in 40 yards and a touchdown, like that's all you need. That's, right. that's so good from him at 3,300. Right. Like I think, I think playing three running backs going Barkley hunt and Hyde, um, like you can, you can pretty much do whatever else you want in that lineup. Like there's, I think over like 5k left in salary per spot, um, before you even put in your defense and tight end. So you can pay wherever you want. Um, so yeah, I think I'll probably do that in cash. Um, I don't know about the ceiling, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do in GPPs, but I think cash hide could make some sense. Now, uh, I will just put some numbers to this. We really only have like one game, a one game sample of no four net and Hyde and Yeldon being the active running backs. That was the London game against Philly. Uh, so obviously a lot of conflating factors involved here. But uh, in that contest, and this is Hyde, was maybe only like two weeks on the team, was inactive one game and then was active here. Uh, Hyde saw 28 snaps to Yeldon's 37. Uh, Yeldon ran 25 pass routes to Hyde's 13. Uh, Hyde had six carries to Yeldon's two, I believe. So the game was like, I mean, Philly was winning, obviously. So this was yeah. like a game yeah. they were playing from behind. So like I'm just saying like if we do expect that game script, then it's it looks like actually pretty bleak for for Hyde, uh, and he could end up like just completely killing you. So I, I am I'm hesitant here. Like I'm gonna try to build a cash team without Hyde. I think this week if I very can. very doable. Yeah, because I think there is value elsewhere, and like I just think that the the range of outcomes on Hyde isn't that great. Like if he hits. 60 yards and a touchdown like i don't know if he can do much better than that that's 12 points like obviously like for his salary that's really good but like i just think at running back this week like the position's so loaded you could be giving up like just a ton of raw points uh at the position so that that's kind of my concern i think with uh with Hyde. i'm pretty sure jones is in agreement with me here but like we i i think are saying that he's much more of a cash game play than a tournament play like mm -hmm. yeah if he's going to be the chalk in tournaments, I think he's an easy fade. Cause I agree. I don't see a ceiling for him. Right. Yeah. That's the, that's the easiest fade in the world. Like what is labs has him like 31 to 40%. I am, oh, I am not, 
he's not going to sniff one of my GPP lineups. Because what's what's the best case scenario for him? Maybe like in the in well, I mean, a the best crazy... case scenario. I mean, the best case scenario is that the game is actually close, I guess, and then he ends right. Up, and even know. then, like, what are you expecting? You think he's going to score more than twenty points? No, I, I mean, no. no. Like, no. there's there's probably... there's no situation where Yeldon is uninvolved. Like, if it's a competitive right. game, we're looking at like a fifty fifty timeshare. And if it's an uncompetitive game, we're looking at something like 75-25 Yeldon. Right. And I think I can, I like I said, like a 3,300 running back, it, I, like it can, I don't want to say it can't kill you, but if you make like the right decisions elsewhere, I think it's very easy, easy to overcome that and compared to like, you know, if we had, like I said before, like a Gio Bernard at 5,800 or something and you play him because he's the backup and he bust, that's a totally different conversation. Like 3,300 is basically min salary. So I think it makes sense to just say, all right, let me, let me load up on some extra targets at wide receiver with that savings and be able to play whoever I want then. I don't know. That's just how I'm, how I'm viewing it. But I'm a fish, so who the hell knows? <laughs> no, like I, I understand what you're saying. Like my point, though, is that like even in a cash setting, like you don't want to just consider the floor because – like someone could play McCaffrey, Gurley, or not Gurley, McCaffrey, Saquon, and like Aaron Jones or something, and like just massively, massively outscore you at running back, even though like your median expectation is, you know, like points per dollar, you're like, oh yeah, like Hyde's going to smash. But it's not all about points per dollar. Like you got to get, you you want like, I think that upper range of outcomes still in a cash game. That, it's, it's just a consideration for me. I'm not saying you can't yeah. play in cash. I'm just saying that's like, something I'm weighing when I'm trying to build my lineup this week. I also think just, I, I don't want to like belabor this point. And yeah, this is it. a lot of time on Carlos Hyde. But just just from like, really I, but I think decision point this week, I think. Yeah, and I think it's important to think about like just in general, like not even just this decision and worrying about like when do you really want to save and how do you use that, those extra dollars? Like you're talking about even if you go up from Hyde to say Aaron Jones, like we, you just mentioned before, right? Like he's, I'm, I'm going to say that he's one of my favorite tournament plays in a minute. So like get that out of the way now. That's, that's over $3,000 difference. So you're talking about going from like, I don't know, like a, a Tyler Boyd to Tyreek Hill at wide receiver then. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's how I view it. Like the decision that's being made is allowing you to do like a, a plus move at another position or at the same position and really access like a crazy ceiling that you wouldn't have been able to get to otherwise. That's kind of how I view it. All right, cool. Well, like I said, running back super loaded. Uh, who's a cash play that you like that I haven't mentioned yet or that we haven't talked about? Uh, Jones, we'll stick with you. Yeah, I mean, I I really do think I'm just locking in Barkley and Hunt and – deciding about Hyde now that like you like you're trying to talk me out of it um so yeah I don't know I don't think I really am looking elsewhere at at running back other than the top four and Hyde right now okay well we'll take your turn well you can talk about Aaron Jones I guess then while we're with you yeah I mean he's he's just been smashing right like he's exceeded salary five games in a row um I think I, I really like Green Bay in general in that game for for very obvious reasons um, I think they're going to score a ton of points. So, um, yeah, I mean, Aaron Jones just seems like the, like a pretty decent play. He's going to be owned. Um, but I think that the ceiling is probably worth it. All right. Lamarca, any, uh, any cash or tournament plays that you like that we haven't yet discussed? Um, yeah, a lot of them. So I'll just <laughs> rattle them off bullet point wise. <laughs> Philip Lindsay might be my favorite running back play of the week at 5,400, uh, Lamar Miller at 4,600 versus Houston. Uh, and I guess Aaron Jones was my other one who we've already kind of talked about, but those are the guys that I think make the Jacksonville decision like irrelevant for cash games. Cause I think you could play Philip Lindsay very comfortably at 5,400 and he's going to give you such a safer floor and, and a significantly higher ceiling as well. And the same goes for Lamar Miller. Like Cleveland stinks against the run. Uh, Houston has not thrown the ball nearly as much since the Deshaun Watson injury thing. 
and he's coming off of a huge game. So, like, the fact that he's 4,600, I think, is also very appealing. All right. Uh, so, obviously, you guys haven't left me much here to work with. Um, <laughs> I don't really have anybody else, though. Like, I really I really think I'm going to lay into this upper tier. Um, I Like, I for the first time in a while, I'm not even really considering David Johnson. Like, I... I just don't like the spread, obviously. Um, so I think I'm kind of good. Uh, James White at 6,500 is a little interesting, just because. Uh, I mean, I know Burkhead's back, but he has he does have like pretty big receiving upside. Like the dude was like 8K like two weeks ago. So uh, definitely, I think worth considering, but not like a must consider, considering the slate is just so deep at running back. Like it's just so crazy. Deep. All right, let's move on to receiver. Before I do that, I want to challenge you guys to get in on this week's Listener League. Just $5 to enter, 40-man field. You can get a shout-out on the show. Uh, I don't know. I mean, how did we do filling last week? I felt like we were, we thought we were up against it, and then we filled it. Like I think, I think that's kind of just what happens every week. Um, yeah. so just it, was a little, it was a little too close for comfort, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So don't slack. I mean, you guys have been filling it kind of consistently. Let's not lose that. Uh, the link to the contest is going to obviously be up on Twitter. You should get, if you're in like the league part, you should get like a notification when the contest is made. Yep. Um, that's where I think like half the league is filled pretty much like by Saturday. Uh, but the, the link will also be for this video on YouTube as well. So there should be plenty of options, plenty of ways for you to find the link to listener league, get in, fill it and take our money. Now at wide receiver this week, uh, you mentioned Tyree Kale before Jones. Uh, he's the only receiver over 8,200 this week. He's all the way up at 9,100. Lamarca, any interest in Tyreek Hill at such a exorbitant price? Nope. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right, Jones? That's crazy. Like, why not? <laughs> you can't leave it at that. Why not? Because he's 9,100. <laughs> he wants answers. And he's, he's so boomer bust. Like, I have no problem fading super expensive Tyreek Hill. It's just, it's not a problem for me. Um, if he has a week where he goes for 102 touchdowns, I'll lose. But I'm okay with that. Yeah, and you actually might not lose because I, I would imagine the price is going to make him pretty prohibitive. Like, he might not even be, like, super high. Like, you could you could fade him. You could fade, like, a 100 yard in a touchdown game from him, probably still be okay. He has to have, like, the mega game like he did on Monday yeah, night. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's really all that I'm worried about, which is, again... He's so capable of doing that, and it's a great spot against Oakland. But uh, I just, you know, nine ninety one hundred for him, it just hurts my eyes when I look at it. Like that's the real scientific answer. Like ninety one hundred is reserved for, you know, guys like Antonio Brown last year. If he was eighty nine hundred, would that change your answer? No, that's. I mean, yes, that's it would. Still, it completely would. That's still <laughs> seven hundred dollars more than every other receiver on the slate. All right. No, I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm not really considering him at all. Even my like yeah, even for labs when I wrote up the stacks this week, like I he's not even in my chief stack that I wrote up. Like I just don't think you need to play him. I mean, Jones, tell us why we're wrong. Because it's Tyreek Hill. Like he's gonna score two touchdowns very easily and it's gonna be a smash. Like it there it, it's it's ridiculous. If you're not if you're not playing him, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't because the price is going to like, I know labs has him nine to 12. I don't think it gets there. I think he's probably in the five to eight range because of the price. And I think that you just want a guy with that ceiling when he's lower owned. So like, I just don't want to overthink it. Like he's, he makes big plays like Lamar, you said before, Oakland gives up a ton of big plays. So like, let's go fire him up. <laughs> I shouldn't say I have no interest. Like on my Mahomes teams, I'll probably have some exposure, but like that's really the only situation. I won't use him as a standalone option. Oh yeah, for sure. No, I'm yeah, I'm talking about stacks. Like I'm he's <laughs> like he's f the furthest wide receiver away from my cash lineup. All right. Well, the next group of guys really just has like a ton of names from 7,400 all the way up to 8,200. Uh, Jones, who's your favorite guy here? I mean, there's a lot to choose from, I think. I don't even ne know if you necessarily have to play anybody in this range, but who would be your top guy? Oh, see, I'm like, I'm loading up on this range. 
right. this is the best. Like this is I'm <laughs> I'm spreading it out all over the place in this range. Like this is where all the money is going to be made. Like if you're if you're talking about uh, like tournament play, I think Devonte Adams is going to be super low owned for like really no apparent reason compared to like like what's the what's the major difference between his ceiling and the guys around him? I don't think there's a ton of a difference there. So um, I think he's like an elite tournament play this week. Um, and obviously, like Thielen is just a smash every single week. So those are those are my two favorites as of right now. Well, Marco. Yeah, as long as Thielen plays, I think he's the top guy. Like Minnesota and New England is projected to be the fastest pace game of the of the week. Even though the total on that game is only at 49 and a half, it has risen pretty considerably since opening. Um, New England is the fastest paced team in the league. So playing against them is just ultimately going to result in more possessions for your team. And the Vikings, every time Thielen is on the floor, he just he just smashes. So yeah, give me some Adam Thielen. I also could definitely get behind Uncle Julio at 7,700. Uh, guy has either 100 or a touchdown, like, every game basically this year and we know he only started scoring touchdowns very recently so uh, <laughs> it's a tough matchup versus baltimore that could lower his ownership but he's also just 7700 so uh, i like both of those guys a lot yeah i mean i'll be honest julio is probably the only guy here that i'm even like considering i don't really like a lot of these guys this week um i think is the feeling thing more just because of injury or the new england corners like it's kind of like a combination like i, I banged up Really good secondary. I kind of like New England to win. Like, I don't – I don't know. I, I feel like this is like a game where Belichick is just – like, he could just easily just take Thielen out of the game because he's Bill Belichick. And, are you going to say something, Jones, or should I? How dare you insult Adam Thielen like that? I just, no, I um, love Adam Thielen. I think I'm he's upset. great. No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't do no that. No one can no. take Adam Thielen away. No. But I'm not no, – no. I, no, I, no. Don't, you don't know me. I, this is my show. I'm knowing you, all right? <laughs> I, like, I don't think – like, listen, I'm all for good players. And, like, Thielen's a good player and he gets targets. Like, I don't disagree with any of that. I just don't like paying – like, I don't like paying top dollar for wide receivers when, like, I have questions. And, like, I have a couple questions. Like, that's just how I feel. You know, like, at, at running back, when I can guarantee the touches, I'm willing to take on some more questions, like with a Saquon Barkley. But, you know, at basically the same price, like, I'm not going to play Adam Thielen, who's going against, like, the best secondary. Like, I'm just not going to do it. I just think him and Julio are, like, the exact same player this week. So the fact that you like one and don't like the other doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Well, when I say – I mean, I'm definitely not playing either in cash. Like I, I'm just saying, like Julio would be my preferred tournament play. Okay, but I'm probably fading this whole range in, in cash. Devontae yeah, Adams, so by I'm the way, just... to answer what you were saying before, is yeah. a 100% Patrick Peterson thing for me because we are still unsure if how good Devontae Adams is, but I am really sure that Patrick Peterson's really good. <laughs> I did see that, like teams that have shadowed Devontae this year. Uh, have not fared well. If you want to uh, ad lib for a minute, I'll I'll pull up the tweet that I saw that in. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I mean, I just... like last week, okay, I okay. was uh, walking the dog. <laughs> Go ahead, Jones. No, the, like I said before, <clears throat> I think it's one of those things where, like, yeah, sure. Like Patrick Peterson is a good football player, but like Arizona is going to be boat raced in this game, and I just I don't really see like not playing him at that ownership. It's more of an ownership thing than anything else. Mm -hmm. Like it's if that's what's suppressing his ownership, like the matchup, then great. Like I will play those guys a hundred times out of a hundred in GPPs because if they do hit their ceiling, their actual ceiling, then they're going to be good plays in a tournament because they're going to be so low owned because people are scared of the matchup. So I just, I don't, I don't care about that. Defense doesn't matter. I'm over it. All right, that's so fair. I'm not I'm not using this as an excuse to play Devontae Adams. I just thought it was interesting and worth sharing. Again, this is from my man, Ian Hartitz. Uh, Devontae Adams shadowed six times this season. Xavier Rhodes twice. He went for 864 and a touchdown and 569 and a touchdown. Darius Slay once. He went 9, 140 and a touchdown. Stephon Gilmore, he went 640 and a, and a touchdown. Tredavious White, he went 8-81, and 81, no touchdowns, 
Marcus Peters, he went five for 133, no touchdowns. So I'm not saying that just because he's had success against other quarterbacks or cornerbacks, that means that he will have success being shadowed by Patrick Peterson. I'm just saying that if you like Devontae, like Jones does, I wouldn't have that be enough of a reason to dissuade me from playing him. I mean, that's definitely fair. I mean, plus they, they, might, they might not even shadow him. I guess that's possible too. And we have like the angry Rogers narrative too, which I'm like fully buying into this week. Oh, so I, I, if, if we have to move this along or else I would just but, go into a whole yeah. thing about an angry Rogers narrative. Um, Randall Cobb said it today. Yeah. He's, he, I fucking hate that guy. In you the, need to relax, Amico. All right. R E L A X. <laughs> Now, the 6-7K to 7K range for me is the sweet spot. We have Cooks, we have Woods, Galladay, Sanders, T.Y. Hilton. I, I, this is the spot that I really like. I mean, I, I love Robert Woods this week. I think playing like that interior role against Detroit is going to pay dividends. Like Detroit has not found a slot corner all year. You'd imagine Darius Slay is going to see more snaps against Cooks than Woods. Uh, so I really like Bob Woods in this spot. Uh, but what do you guys think? Uh, Lamarco, we'll start with you. Kenny Galladay is probably going to be a cash game play for me. If you look at what he's done since they've traded away Marvin Williams, he's had or Marvin Jones. Jeez, my name's I'm all basketball right now. If you can't tell, <laughs> uh, he's had an over 30% market share and LA has really struggled against pass plays, particularly uh, they've given up a lot of explosive plays. So I think Kenny Galladay is a really strong play at 6,700. Definitely agree with that. Jones. I'm just, I, I'm just such a sucker for cooks. Like I'm, just, I don't care. Like Slay's a hot fraud. Like I don't care. <laughs> um, I, Devontae I, Adams dusted him. I, I hate Darius Slay so much. Like I, I'm not nervous about that at all. Um, yeah, no, I'm. I, I agree with you about Woods. I think you can. Honestly, I think you could go like Goff, Cooks, and Woods and be pretty happy with the outcome. Um, That's but I, I, I definitely like them. I'm not as crazy as uh, like on the lower end there, like Sanders and Hilton. I'm not crazy about. Obviously, they're both um, dealing with some some injuries, like they're going to play, but uh, they've been limited this week. So um, I'm not as interested there. I think that Cooks and Woods are my my two uh, favorites there. Yeah, I mean Goff, Cooks, Woods, Galladay. Running back with Galladay. I think that's a nice. There you stack. go. Um, now, at the low end of the price spectrum, Marcel Aitman appears to be the top target in Oakland. Uh, Bruce Ellington has seen 16 targets the past two weeks. With Marvin Jones out. Obviously, he's going to remain out. Uh, they are 3,600 and 3,500, respectively. Jones, you have any interest? I mean, geez, like this kid from Oakland, like he had, a, he had 10 targets in 100 air yards, and he scored like five points last week. Like that's just the the ultimate Derek Carr effect, right? Like, he's is that just... your Frisco Josh way of saying no? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes him a prime buy low candidate in the air yards model. I don't know, man. That's uh, that's like that's wild to me. Um, yeah, I mean, if he's gonna keep seeing that volume, like I wrote him up in the in the buffet this week. Like, I if he's gonna see that volume, obviously you would expect that the points are going to come at some point. Um, but geez, like that's, that's some pretty woeful inefficiency. Um, so I'm not sure that he's quite there yet. And like hard pass on Bruce. Allen. Like, I don't think you need to pay. I don't think you need to go this cheap at wide receiver this week. So I'm not, I'm not touching him. Lamarca. Yeah. Marcel Eatman literally has a floor projection of zero in the fantasy <laughs> labs model. <laughs> <laughs> literally zero like normally they'll give you like a zero point something but uh his is zero but that doesn't deter me i uh i like him quite a bit <laughs> one thing that we know is that garbage time favors receivers more than any other position like if teams are going to back off you can rack up catches you can rack up yards you can score touchdowns like it's not as good for quarterbacks because normally if you're in that situation it's because you haven't played well for the first half of the game but it means that receivers can can score points quickly towards the end of the game. So uh, I definitely have more interest in Aitman than Jonesy does. I'm not sure if I would consider him cash viable, you know, like evidenced by the floor projection of zero. But if I do want to load up everywhere else on my roster, I, I could actually see myself using him. Yeah, I mean, I like both of these guys. I much prefer, I like really like 
paying down at receivers when I can get some volume. I feel like between six and eight targets is like a reasonable projection for both of these guys. You know, maybe even a little more if you assume that they they skew really pass heavy, uh, given the respective spreads. So I like both of these guys. I think that like I would much rather play those kinds of guys and save my money at receiver where like I feel like the role is at least like somewhat solidified than play like a total question mark in Carlos Hyde. Like that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Uh, especially since I don't really like the top end of the pricing like I was talking about before. Like I think uh, like a Kenny Galladay or Robert Woods or maybe both and like one of these guys, like I, I think that's the receiver group that I really want this week in uh in cash games. Uh, I will say Bruce Ellington scares the hell out of me. He scored yeah. he, he had like six catches last week and at 30 yards. Like I, I understand he plays the slot so he's not gonna see a tremendous average depth of target, but like we want some we want some more upside than that, don't we? Yeah, it's seen 16 targets and 54 air yards over the past two weeks. Yeah, that, that's, that's disgusting. where I would say I prefer Aiden and straight up. Like yeah. th- I just think this is this is one of those things like that I'm trying to get, get away from. Like I would not be shocked if both guys just like sagged. Like I I get the volume and everything else, but I could see it just going like horribly wrong. And I just feel like I like on Sunday night I'll be like like of course like <laughs> Marcel even didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like it's just one of those like life hedge things that I just like can't I can't play them and then be like expecting them to do great things. All right, all fair. Uh, Lamarca, anyone else that we haven't mentioned that you want to discuss? Uh, I think Adam Humph- Humphreys might be like the better version of those two guys we just talked about. He's only 4200 so he's only slightly more expensive, and I think he just has a much safer floor. So, like, if possible, he would be the punt receiver that I would like to use. But, you know, if you need the, the $600 savings, to if you know, going down to Aitman, I think that's viable. Uh, but I think that Humphreys is just like a better version of those guys. Jones. Uh, yeah, I like that. Um, I, I also, I just can't get away from Tyler Lockett. Like I know he has the, the sort of boom bust tag, but like he's, he's been in double digits all but one game this year in PPR. So I think that he's, um, he's obviously touchdown dependent, but like he's shown sort of a skill at scoring touchdowns. So I'm not that worried about it. Um, and I'm just going to stack them up with Russ and GPPs and just print like it's fine. <laughs> wow, he's talking about printing. Um, I honestly don't have a lot of other guys that I like. I mean, I obviously if we're considering Rams like Josh Reynolds at 4,900 is at least in play. Um, but I'm not like super thrilled with it. I, I just, I think that receiver for a full slate, I don't really love the receiver position. It's probably my least favorite. Of all the positions, so I'm, I'm so guys. concerned. I'm so concerned that you guys don't like wide receiver because I like everybody. <laughs> it's gonna be a tight player pool for me this week, but that's fine. Uh, at tight end, no Zach Ertz this week. He's playing on Monday night, so it's Kelsey at 7K. He's the only guy 6K or higher at tight end. Uh, so obviously, we have to kind of make a decision here, Jones. Uh, I mean, Kelsey and Cash. I mean, probably not, but like if you're not stacking him, like I I can just picture myself like talking about like printing money. Like ha- if you don't stack Mahomes and Kelsey somewhere, like I I don't know why you're why you have any money in your account. Like <laughs> you should absolutely be playing uh Kelsey this week in some capacity. I don't know that you need to play him in cash. I think you can get there a couple different ways at tight end. Um, but yeah, in the GPP, I don't know how you get away from Kelsey. For the record, if you were to stack Kelsey and your beloved Tyreek Hill with Patrick Mahomes, you'd only have uh, about 43, 4,400 left for a slot. So. Yeah, and then you just smash with Aidman and Ellington and you're fine. <laughs> well, Mark, what do you think about Kelsey? <laughs> uh, I much prefer Kelsey to Tyreek in all formats. Uh, but that being said, I will not be considering him in cash this week. Uh, there are just too many other high priced players that I like, and there's like the obvious lock button cheap tight end. Right. Uh, so this is where I'm going to be looking to do some savings. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be loading up at the other positions. All right. Well, Matt, I mean, who who is that play? Let's get to it. Who, who's it's your... Matt Lacasse for Denver. 
Uh, he is like the last man standing on their depth chart at this point. Denver really likes throwing to the tight end. Lacasse had a touchdown last week. He's in a nice spot against Cincinnati, who has been a disaster defensively recently. Uh, I just think that at 2,500, this is like a throwback to the old days where you could get a nice tight end with upside for really cheap. Uh, so I'm taking advantage. Uh, Jones, thoughts on Lacoste and uh, anyone else that you're looking at in at tight end as like a strong cash play? Um, yeah, no, it's it's that. There, there's no other options. Twenty five hundred is is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm I'm doing that in as many places as possible. I mean, can I interest either of you in Eric Ebron at forty two hundred with no Jack Doyle? And Has no, his and like snap no chair? Mo Ali Cox. That's what I was gonna say though. Like even when Doyle was out, I don't think that Ebron became like this smash, uh, like play every snap kind of guy at the position. Um, I will say that at forty two hundred, I'd flex him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If he was a wide receiver at forty two hundred, I would have interest in him. So, like, I could definitely see myself using Lacasse and then flexing a cheap tight end. It, it, uh, Greg Olson too at forty one hundred is somebody that I would be considering in the nut matchup against Tampa Bay. So yeah, like I think this is definitely a viable two tight end week if you don't want to go three running backs. Uh, for the record, Ebron did exceed 70% of the snaps last week, so we do have some indication that he'll play a lot. Uh, but Jones... Did uh, I say he wouldn't exceed 70, or did I say he's not an every snap guy? Well, not a <laughs> tight end, usually these guys... Like, that's a really good number for tight ends. A lot of times these guys don't play every snap. All right, I'll defer to you, I guess. Um, but but Jones, what what's your take on Ebron? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that that... I don't know, man. Like, in GPPs, like, the ownership is going to be pretty ridiculous um I, I could see going with him in cash if you wanted to like if you have you know the whatever that is 1700 bucks and you you don't want to go like super dumpster divey um it's a very fair price for what his role is probably going to be all right now i mean if you guys really like lacoste uh in tournaments are you going to go elsewhere or are you going to feel comfortable rolling him there jones in tournaments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you like him for cash, but like in a tournament setting, yeah. we just still roll him. Yeah, um, probably in some spots where like I do want to, you know, screw around with like getting Gurley and McCaffrey in a lineup. Like that's the that's the spot that I would probably want to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like as far as tournament plays go, <laughs> you mentioned it before. Like you could see Belichick sort of taking uh, Thielen away. So like wouldn't that automatically mean like Rudolph has like things are being funneled inside uh, towards Rudolph. So I think that he's a pretty elite tournament play at very low ownership this week. Well, Marco, who do you like for uh, Jeeps this week? Yeah, I, I have no problem playing Lacasse and GPPs because like normally the problem with these cheap guys is you don't see the ceiling, but I think he has just as much ceiling as, you know, most of these tight ends on this slate and I'm still getting him for like more than a thousand dollars less than most, most of them. Uh, and I don't think he's going to be like super crazy chalk. Um, I think Iran for sure will be higher owned, probably significantly higher owned. Uh, I already mentioned Greg Olson. I think he's an awesome GPP pivot. He's a hundred dollars less expensive than Ebron, which will probably make him overlooked. Uh, and I think you can go back to Gronk again at 5,400. Um, didn't smash last week against the Jets, but he caught a touchdown. And I do think this game should be fast paced, which I mentioned earlier. So uh, I think those are kind of where I'm looking at tight end, uh, along with um, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, I'm surprised. I actually thought that the Gronk price was going to skyrocket a little bit because he scored. But uh, only yeah, but he only had like two catches, right? Yeah, I think it was like three for 58 and touchdown or something like that. But I, I just would have thought like the algorithm would have been like, oh, Gronk's back. Boop. Like, you know, like, um, so yeah, no, I, I agree with most of what you guys are saying. So let's uh, let's move on to defense, which is what everybody obviously has been waiting for. Uh, Packers yeah. and Chiefs are both uh, massive favorites against the spread, and they're under three k. So I mean, is it reasonable to say that this is where you should be going in cash, Lamarca? Yeah, play Green Bay. Uh, Arizona can't pass block. The fact that. Green Bay might be down. Mike Daniels is a little bit concerning, but I still think that they're going to be able to put a ton of pressure 
on Josh Rosen. They're massive favorites, and they're 2,800. That's all I need to know. Jones? Yeah, I'm just going to play Kansas City. Yeah, I'm obviously in the same boat. Uh, now, in tournaments, there's a ton of options I think you can go with. Uh, the highest price defense on the week uh, is what, Seattle, I think, 3,400? Like yeah, the, the, pricing, the pricing for defense is pretty tight this week. Um, you don't have like a 4K defense against a, a crappy quarterback. So, Jones, who's like your tournament defense du jour? Yeah, like it's it's crazy. There's only what three three defenses at three K or above. Um yeah, I mean I don't know, like I think Chicago makes some sense. I think Eli's probably gonna spend a lot of time on his ass this weekend. Oh yeah. Um I don't know, that's that's like that makes a little bit of sense to me. Maybe uh maybe a little bit of Denver against Driscoll. Like that's probably the two that I'm looking at um, as of now, but I just, you know me, I spread it out at defense. So, Lamarca? I like the Chicago call. You know, you mentioned there's no 4K defenses against a crappy quarterback, but we do have a 3.3K defense against a crappy quarterback. No. So, uh, I like Chicago. Uh, I agree with Jones on Denver, and I will also sprinkle in some Miami against Buffalo. Uh, I still don't know what Miami is or Buffalo is like both of these teams are (laughs) complete enigmas to me, but Buffalo has been uh, quite fortuitous in terms of fantasy points allowed to defenses. So uh, I could see myself using some Miami as well. Uh, I'll add Indy to the mix just because I'll always play defense against Cody Kessler. Uh, Sure. I think this is a really good defense for the, uh, a good week for the Jones strategy of just like sprinkling it around because it really sprinkle the cheapies. Yeah. There's really a lot of ways you can go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Let's get to, uh, let's get to building a Millie team. Uh, I think we've had some decent success with this the last couple weeks, except the fact that I chose Nick Mullins in our team. But other than that, we've, we've done pretty well. I tried to tell y'all. Yeah. It's mostly been your guys' picks that have been good. Uh, but Jones, uh, you can go first this week. All right, I'll uh, I'll just lock in Devonte Adams. <laughs> uh, you're just like telling me to go f off with the first day. Um, all right, Lamarca, go ahead. I'll save the money and I'll go with Lacosse. I can't say like he's the best like GPP play on the board, and then we're building a milli lineup and not like say play Devonte Adams. Nah, dude, that's what that's Fair. what, that's what touts do. <laughs> Um, I am going to play uh, Goat Quan. Nice. Uh, Jones, back to you. Uh, I was gonna. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, let's go. Uh, I said lock it too, so let's go lock it. Okay, I was gonna say we have like fifty three hundred left. This team is a disaster. No, it's it's gonna be super lit yeah. in a second. Lamarca no playing the role of Silva, just. <laughs> on the picks. This team is a disaster. Uh, who do you want can, here, Matt? Can we fit Kenny G at sixty seven hundred? Oh, there's always room for Kenny G, man. Okay, now the interesting thing is I'm not really sure where we're going at quarterback with this. Let's alignment. wrap this thing up with uh with Nikki Two Sticks again. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm going to let one of you guys play the quarterback because I am not putting Aaron Rodgers in this fucking lineup. <laughs> I just refuse to do it. Um, I will, however, play... Uh, over 4,800 a slot. We still need a quarterback. So we probably Andrew need Luck. someone cheap. Andrew Luck, 5,800. I mean, who are we going to stack them with? You're going to go naked, Luck? No, nah, e- Ebron in the slot, uh, in the flex. Ooh, it's good salary saver. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can play luck. We can play luck. It's a, if it, if nothing else, it's a good block of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> uh, Lamar could take us home. We got one pick left. That's it. No, no, we got one more. We have one spot. Didn't we do six six picks? Yeah, we can do seven. Oh, Jones Jones is up. Sorry, Jones is up. Wait, I'm very confused right now. We have so, Luck, Barkley, Adams, Lockett, Galladay. Lacoste. Lacoste. Oh, well, I... I uh, yeah, oh, you got to stack Ebron on the Ebron. Saying, yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. All right, cool. I already cool. clicked Lock, so it, it's, it's so, fine. I'm so that's throwing the spot. So you got Luck, Barkley, Adams, Lockett, Galladay, Lacoste, Ebron. So you got a running back and a defense left, 4,600 a spot. I think this is... Uh, I think there's definitely a couple good, like, RB, DST stacks you could play still with that range. Um, 
I think lots of good options. So good yeah. good job by us. I think we, Love you know, it. Jones put us behind the eight ball and we and we figured it out. <laughs> I suck. Uh, <laughs> <I'm so weird. laughs> um, all right, guys, great job tonight. Uh, I know the show went uh, a shade over an hour, but I mean for us that's pretty short. So that's not bad. I <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hope you guys like the show. Hope you guys all smash this week. That's going to do it for this edition of On the Daily. Please be sure to subscribe to, subscribe to, rate, and review the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. Check out the Listener League and uh, check us out here on Twitch. Hit the follow button so you see when we go live every week. For Matt and Matt, I'm Anthony Amico. Thanks for listening.